So today I'm going to talk about my research in the area of handwriting recognition, basically, and uh, or if you could say so, like how, what can we actually get of digitized archives? And we'll be a little bit more technical at some parts, but I will give you also a high-level overview of what we can do with AI. And so I'd say let's just jump right into it. So if we look at a, um, well, pipeline that we could basically build to digitize data, we would first, of course, start left with digitization, and then we would get our um, digitized data. And then there are some things we could do with this uh, archive digitized material. We could do um, some text recognition with optical character recognition of printed text, which is quite well uh, already researched and working. Then interesting would be having a look at handwriting or um, yeah, handwriting. Then we also do have some images in there that we would like to analyze. And we could go even further than in the end and just extract more semantics that we actually have in our um, archives. And what I'm focusing on are actually those three parts you see here. And that's handwriting and also images. So, well, let's, let's start with the digitization. What's the kind of data that I get? Basically, it's something like this. We have scans that are basically images that you took with your digital camera, for instance. And from, well, they are very quite diverse. You have um, printed text, you have handwriting, you have um, what you can see here in the middle, you have some images that are on these uh, scans. And the question is, what's actually in that image? So we need to know what's in there. And if we look at what we could do, some instances of uh, ideas. For instance, we could first, well, say, um, what's the type of the document we have? Is it actually something that only shows a cover of a book, for instance? Is it something that's a handwritten letter that only contains handwriting? Or is it something that's also interesting that, uh, that could be a mixture of printed text and handwriting? Or we could go even further, some more classification um, ideas. So just to say what's actually at hand to give uh, researchers, that, researchers that look at the archive an idea what they are actually dealing with, if, with each picture. And if we take one of these as example and say, now let's do some kind of content analysis and just figure out what's actually on that image, we could try to basically segment uh, all each pixel, or you know, we could segment the image and decide for each pixel what it is. Is it handwriting? Is it printed text? Or is it just a background? And then we get some more information about the, the image, what's in there. Or if you take another example, we could also say like each red pixel in this case is an image. Um, we can say, okay, so now we already know what each of these scans actually contain. And so we can go even further in the end and then just say, okay, now we want to have a look at handwriting because the handwriting is interesting because the uh, art historian or just some people who actually worked with these um, not the atoms, so basically the, um, I'm not too sure, we, um, so yeah, basically the curator, for instance, um, what, what they've been working with. So we can just say what, well, let's just say what's, what's in that and classify each part of the handwriting, which is interesting. And you could say, okay, look, this image actually contains identifiers, has some, some text as such, um, we have some dates in there, or we have a signature. And we also might have a signature here. So that if somebody's looking for information about a specific identifier, for instance, he could get this document and it says, all right, oh, here, there's some more information. And we can, of course, in, in the end, that's uh, the holy grail we actually want to achieve, is uh, recognize each instance of the text we have in there. And so the question is, how does it work? And let me go, let me get a step back and let's show what's actually a computer looking at, what's it, what's it seeing, right? So if we look at the left image, we see there's a man with a camera standing on a field, for instance. And the right image, well, it's the same image, but this case only with some numbers on top of it. So the computer sees numbers. And if you take it to, to an extreme, the computer would actually see this. And this is quite difficult for us to understand. I don't know, it's, for us, it would be difficult to understand. Well, just numbers. There's like, an, it's pretty difficult for us. So we need to do, we use, we need to use some sophisticated methods to actually extract the information from that image. And or we got, what could we use? Machine learning. And well, let me just give you a brief overview of how machine learning actually, uh, or state of the art machine learning works. On the left side, you see the three uh, ingredients we actually need. 
The first ingredient is data. Okay, we have it. Those are our images. The second ingredient is a neural network. That's basically our algorithm that does uh, the decision and predictions. And on the bottom, we have annotations. That means for each image, we actually need to know what's in there, but only during the training phase or the learning phase. That's why it's called machine learning. And the last thing we actually need that's on the right side, we need some kind of error measure. So we need to know whether a prediction of our machine learning neural network is correct or not. So that means if we would have the inputs, you can see here, this is the input we have to our neural network. The neural network gives us an output and says, for instance, for a top image, this is a cover. And then we have, for the, during the training, we have the annotation that says, well, this is a cover, and we say, yes, which would be green. And for the other one, we say right now, because it says handwriting only, but it's mixed content, we'd say, no, that's wrong. But after we've trained the neural network, you see it changed a little bit, it now, the um, output for the bottom thing is also mixed output. So we say, yes, that's pretty cool. Um, this Actually, you could see some thumbs up memes here, but the, I think the, the font doesn't work in this case. <laughs> Sorry for that. <coughs> okay, so, but let's, let me get more into detail again. So, um, we have the training, right? We have our training image. This is the image, and we have the label you can see on the bottom. Then we have our network, and in the beginning it uh, tells us something. Okay, this case is wrong. We tell it, no, no, it has to be mixed content. Please learn this, then the network changes, and because it learns with the algorithm, and then if you put it back again, it says mixed content. We are like, yeah, pretty cool, good job. And now the question is, what are we actually doing now with unseen data? Because that's actually the most important thing right now, right? Because now we've been learning our model, and now we have to see how can actually work on other kinds of data. So we have the testing phase, and you see there's no label anymore. So we can only do predictions. And in this case, because it's already trained, it says there's only handwriting on it, and we are happy, because it works. That's the basic idea. But there's a problem with the whole thing if we want to go to archival data. Um, so if we now would say we want to do semantic segmentation, it means, for in this case, for instance, um, label each pixel what kind of class it belongs to, we would say, okay, we need our input image, and we need another image that's actually already the labeled image. So that we can basically train a model that can do this for us. But we don't have that. We only have this input image. So we need to find different ways on how to do that. And that's basically uh, where we come into play. So let's, uh, let me try to walk you through some ideas that we have, or the idea we have to solve this problem uh, in our research. So we take this image, and it looks quite good. Uh, but actually, this, the whole image is quite a difficult problem. Let's just try to break it down into smaller pieces and just solve the problem of, cement, <laughs> of segmenting, meaning classifying each pixel for each of these smaller parts. That's already good, but still we don't have the annotation we need. So how can we get the annotation? Well, let's just gener generate data. Let's use algorithms that can create data for us that looks like the real data. And especially for this kind of smaller parts, we can try to generate data that looks quite real. And um, well, if you look at the, the top two rows of this, of this slide, you can see that the first row is actually real data from the WPI archive. And the second row, well, that's generated data, that's artificial data that I just generated with, uh, with an algorithm that I trained for it. So that's not real, but it looks quite real, which is in this case the most important thing. It just needs to look real. And because then if we get a model that can do that, we can apply this model on the real data. And on the bottom, some other uh, kind of data we can actually use as a base to make it that we want to make more realistic in the end. So, and just to do it again, uh, we could, for instance, take these, uh, well, images on the left, put them through a network, and then generate some real-looking images. This, those are just uh, images I, I crafted by hand, so they could look like this, but actually it would be better if they look, looked more real. And then, later on, we can train using the input images we had for, a gen for the generation and the generated images to train a model that can actually do it the other way around again, and then, we hope we can actually apply this to the real data. And so we can do this for each part of the input image and then stitch all of these things together in the end to get a segmented images, image. So, and why did I show you this? Because I think that um, the semantic segmentation part or this um, 
yeah, is a very important pre-processing step for lots of subsequent steps because now we actually know a lot of about the structure of the image we have or the scanned page, and then we can use this for lots of other things, um, finding out whether there's actually handwriting on the image or on on the on the scan, and then where is all of this so that we need for subsequent steps for classification, recognition, and also just to find out whether there are whether there are images on our scanned page. And so let me go for to other things that I could, uh, we could do too. This is, for instance, handwriting classification. So, um, because the recognition is actually quite a hard task, especially if we talk about handwriting because it's so diverse and could be from so many different uh, writers and errors and so many different languages. Well, could we maybe use the structure of such a handwriting that we find in images to classify before we actually do the recognition what's actually contained in there? And so we could do it for dates, identifiers, signatures, uh, price tags, or something like that, just to uh, give researchers or people looking at the archive an idea what's actually contained in that page. And so what, how could we do this? Well, let's just use a neural network, that's our idea. <clears throat> put in there this, this, the simple structures and train this network to put all those images that are quite, that have the same structure close together in a semantics, in a very high dimensional space. Or if we think about a three dimensional space, let's just say the left two images, we put them here, and the right image, we put it here. So they are they're quite, because they're different, they're quite far away from each other. And so we can actually um, get this, this space, uh, what, distribution, the distribution of those images in space, just to make sure, and to, yeah, to get our predictions later on, on this. And so this is actually what we are currently working on, but there's, I guess more to come, as I said. So on the, on the one hand, there's the stuff I'm working on, and there's still handwriting recognition at, at well, what we want to do. And then what we also heard about today is like image recognition is also something we're interested in, especially doing it for the archival material, because here uh, we might have just black and white images, for instance, of, of some pieces of art which are not real, um, uh, which are not the real pieces. So, but we still would like to recognize what's in there, what's, what, what is it? And we also have another team at HPI. Um, they are working on the next step. So it means they're, once we have the rec recognized parts of the handwriting and also the printed text, what's actually, what does it mean? So the semantics of each word, for instance, uh, are, are they talking about a place? Um, how do they all belong together? Those different uh, um, yeah, textual entries that we have here. And another thing we're also uh, actually thinking about is for this, for instance, could we link a text together with its, together with the images on that we have? For instance, for catalog searching, or yeah, or just inside of one page or over different pages, so that if you just type in a text, okay, I would like to see in, um, some. If you're looking for a different an item from an auction, for instance, you just don't get the text that describes the item, but also def you get the image of that, of that piece of art, for instance, at the same time. So to sum it up, um, yeah, so the metadata extraction is, uh, I think, pretty, pretty important. Uh, if we look at archives and archival material, just to uh, show everyone that um, uh, it's, yeah, so, sorry. We need this metadata extraction just to, to unleash the full potential that we actually have of dig digitized archive. If we just digitize it, we just have the, the plain page without any information in it. And if we extract the metadata of it, we can actually make it searchable and we can make it possible to explore the data a little bit better with this. And yeah, so we can also link documents together, of course, if we get to know that there are identifiers in there and just also, yeah, give hints about what we have in the data. And one of the biggest problems that we have is that there's no training data or no labeled training data available. And so one solution could be to create those annotations uh, with uh, human, using humans for this, which is quite costly, or if possible, just to generate those kind of annotations and use a model that we actually trained on this generated data on the real data and see how it performs there. And if it performs quite well, well, we actually do have quite a good way of doing this and scaling from one archive to other archives too at the same time. And that's it from my side. Thank you very much for your attention.